So I'm coiling, coiling along, and this coil I added on just does not quite reach. Well, what am I going to do here? So I happen to have a scrap of clay from my last coil that was actually too long. All I need to do is smooth this in, and I'm going to bevel the edge right here on either side of where I need to add some clay. Kind of line this up like so and bevel those edges the opposite direction. And then just add it on, smooth it in. As long as I kept this nice and covered up and it's not dried out, I'm not going to run into any problems here. Smooth it in, turn it around, smooth this direction, make sure I don't enclose that, that little space where there's no clay, smooth in. And then just start smoothing up like I never had an issue. All right. So it's critical to control your drying of your coil vessel. Uh, the the thing you really want to keep in mind is this lip right here. You want, you want that lip, if you're going to continue adding on to it, to have some moisture to it. So there's a couple things you got to remember when you're building. Uh, if I'm pinching my pot up to thin out the walls, I always want to stop short of thinning this top part. Uh, the thinner this top part is, the more quickly it's going to dry out, right? So always stop short about half an inch when you're pinching and thinning out, pushing these walls up. The other thing is if you need these walls to set up some more, um, you got to control the drying. And I've just cut a piece of dry cleaner bag and if I just simply wrap that around the outside and the inside all the way around, I'm pretty safe to, to leave this to set up. This bottom is exposed, the inside, the bottom is exposed. This can set up and I'll still have some good moisture content in the top uh, top inch or so of my clay to be able to add another coil. And it may be the fact that I may have to take this off and add a little bit of water when I come back to it. Uh, I may even have to score and slip, but that plastic is really going to help you out if you need to add more coils and you need to have these walls set up so they can hold more weight. So now I've got, you know, a fair amount, if I'm holding my template up, a fair amount done on this on this piece. This has started to set up. It's got some integrity, some strength to it. Uh, you can see that the template is pretty far off, but that's okay. I'm just going to start to smooth and lay down these walls a little bit so that they start to come in closer to this template. Um, we'll see how it goes. You can use a rib on the inside, you can use a hand, but you're going to want to smooth from the inside and you're going to want to support from the outside. So just using my hand, I'm just starting to bulge and conform. This is kind of my new template. My hand is my template.
working my way down. Turn. Start near the near the top. Begin to work my way down. Hold my template up, it's getting closer. It's hard to see from this angle, but if I turn it sideways, you can always cheat and go like this. But actually that's what we really want right there. And really just get it closer all the way around and then maybe build some more, build it a little bit higher and then lay it down a little bit more. This is all about feel. You gotta see what the what can the clay do here? How how low can it go? You're doing a little limbo contest. If you've got a flared out form like I do. If you've stayed vertical in your in your pot, it's a little less challenging. This is this is a bit of a challenge. Hope you're up for it. This is where you can also start to create that the delineation of the foot from the rest of the piece if you want to have that foot or you can just bulge and eliminate that foot. Okay? So just keep on putting that template up. Wow, I got a long way to go. Is it possible? Tune in and find out. <laughs> 